The next library I'm going to demonstrate is called Retrofit. Like OKHttp, OK it was created by Square, and it's free and open source. The Retrofit library goes even further than Google's Volley. It handles all of your HTTP downloads, all of the asynchronous task management, and even knows how to transfer JSON-based content into strongly typed plain old Java objects. This library has enormous capabilities, but I'll give you a very simple demonstration. You can get the Retrofit library from this web page at square.github.io slash retrofit. You'll find a little bit of documentation and some samples to base your work on. Just as with the other libraries, you need to add jar files to your app. I've provided the jar files you need in the exercise files. You can go to the Assets Software folder, and you'll need two libraries for this demonstration, Retrofit and JSON. Retrofit depends on the JSON library, which is an implementation of JSON creation and parsing. I'll copy those libraries to my clipboard, and I'll go back to Eclipse, where I've loaded the project Retrofit, and I'll paste these libraries into place. The first step in using Retrofit is to define an interface that describes the feeds you're going to use. I'll go to my default package, and I'll create a new interface, and I'll name it Flowers API. Within the API, you declare one abstract method for each feed you want to use. The declaration will start with an annotation indicating the method of the request, get, post, and so on. I'll start with at get. I'll press control space, and that imports the get annotation from retrofit.http. Now, within a pair of parentheses, define the URL of the feed. But don't include the base URL. Only include the part after the root directory. And so I'll set the location of my flowers feed, the JSON formatted version, as slash feeds slash flowers dot JSON. Now declare the method you want to use. I'll use public void, and I'll name it get feed. When you declare the method, you'll pass in an instance of something called the callback class. It's also a member of the retrofit library. I'll type callback and press control space. You might have to scroll around a bit to find this class in your list. Mine shows up at the top, but be sure to use the interface from retrofit. Next, you indicate what kind of data you want to get back. You could pass in a string if all you want to do is retrieve a simple string. But as I mentioned, Retrofit knows how to take a JSON formatted bit of content and transform it into strongly typed plain old Java objects. Here's the requirement. Your Java object class, in this case my flower class, must have names that exactly match the property names in your JSON content. If you want to get back an array of objects, then it must be declared as an array of objects in the JSON feed. And then you declare a list of objects here. I'll start with list and import that from java.util. And I'll set the type of the items in the list to flower, my plain old Java object class. And I'll import that as well. Then I'll name the object that's being returned response. And that's the end of the method declaration. This is an interface, not a full implementation. So you're only declaring the method structure you'll implement it in your main activity class when you get ready to retrieve the data. So I'll save that and go back to my main activity. Next, I'll declare a constant here that I'll call endpoint. This will be the root domain of your web service location. In my case, it's services.hanselandpedal.com. I'll copy just the beginning of the previous string, and then I'll paste it into place here, and I'll finish it off. So now I've described where my web service lives. The actual complete URL lives in the API. If you take the endpoint and the API definition and put those strings together, that's the complete location of the feed. I'll go back to my main activity. And I'll go down to my request data method. 
this is where I'm currently using my asynchronous task. And I'll get rid of the couple of lines of code that are creating and executing the task. I'll start off with a class called REST Adapter. This is also a member of the Retrofit library. And I'll name this object Adapter. And I'll instantiate it using a class called restadapter.builder. Make sure to include the parentheses at the end of Builder. You're instantiating the object, but don't finish the statement. There's more work to do. Next, call a method called setEndpoint. And I'll pass in the endpoint constant that I already declared. And then on the next line, call the build method, and that creates the adapter object. Now you're ready to implement the API that you already defined. I'll declare an instance of the API, flowers API. I'll name the object API. And I'll use the adapter object and call its create method. And I'll pass in the class property of the API interface, which looks like this, flowers API dot class. You're telling the REST adapter this is the class I want to use that defines where my web service is and how I'm going to call it. And now I'm ready to make the request. I'll call the method that I already defined, api.getFeed. And it asks for a response object. And this will be an instance of that callback that I declared that says it's going to return a list of flowers. I'll declare this as an anonymous inner type using new callback. When I select callback from the list, Eclipse generates the callback methods. They're named success and failure. Notice that the first argument in the success method is the list of flower objects. Retrofit's going to do everything for me. It handles the asynchronous processing. It retrieves the content from the web service, which starts as a string. It parses it as JSON and transforms it into the list of strongly typed objects. And so now all I need to do is save and display the data. I'll save the data to my pre-declared flower list object. This is a list of flowers. And I'll pass arg0. And then I'll call my update display method. And that's it. I'm completely finished. You might want to add some error handling here in the failure method, but all the other code down here that I previously needed to manage my asynchronous task, retrieve the data, and parse it and save it as a strongly typed list of objects is no longer needed. I'll select and delete the async task declaration. I'll organize my imports. I'll save my changes. And I'll clean up any errors. I'll get rid of the declaration of my tasks and any references to that declaration. I'll organize imports again and save, and all of the errors are cleaned up. And I'm ready to test. I'll run the app in the emulator and click the action bar item, and the data is successfully retrieved. So that's a taste of what Retrofit can do. Again, the key to Retrofit is understanding the API model. You can add as many abstract methods to an API as you want to. You can add get methods, post methods, and their support for put and delete and other HTTP methods as well. Once you've defined your methods, you create the adapter, you instantiate your API, you call your methods, and depend on your callback methods to handle the processing. You can end up with a tiny amount of code relative to using async task and rolling your own HTTP URL connection code. And just like the Volley library, the Retrofit library does a lot of internal handling of potential error conditions. If there is a failure, it knows how to roll over and try again, and it knows how to pool connections and make great use of HTTP resources. Some developers have found that Retrofit is a little bit faster than Volley in real life usage, but your mileage might vary. And more importantly, Retrofit is better documented than Volley at this point. Retrofit continues to evolve and improve. Take a look at the Retrofit website and check out the samples for other things you can do with this library.